Life is a cycle. We are born, we grow, we live, and we die. He could lay down as soon as he found out that his arms weren't working. Our time comes and goes without regard for our feelings about it. Boxing has always held up a mirror to the human condition. The clock can give those hands to anybody. Tonight, we take a look at two men who met at the perfect moment in time where you can almost see Father Time tipping the scales on their careers. Eric Morales was the working class hero of Tijuana, Mexico. Legend has it he was actually born in the gym while his father was training for a fight. Eric would soon be joined by brothers Diego and Ivan. The brothers Morales all became champions, sharpening each other and sparring since childhood. As the eldest, Eric had the most to prove. As Eric pounded his way through early opponents, he quickly developed a reputation for rising to the occasion and producing a legendary trilogy with upper-class rival Marco Antonio Barrera. The only man to that point to beat him managed it twice. After their epic trilogy, Barrera went up in weight, leaving the title vacant at 130 pounds. With Morales coming off three wars with the former champ, he was a clear contender for the vacant title. In the other corner was a hungry young man from deep poverty with a fire in his soul. Manny Pacquiao found both a living and an outlet in boxing. It soothed the childhood trauma and focused a ravenous hunger. Manny tore up the Filipino boxing scene with his fluid aggression and utter resolve. He soon got the call to make his American debut. On two weeks' notice, he soundly thrashed Lalo Ledwaba to take his first title. Soon Manny was in the belly of the beast with a generation of Mexican greats. He was coming up from 126 pounds to challenge for yet another title. Manny and Eric were scheduled to face off on March 19, 2005. The world expected a war. Manny wasted no time testing what Eric had left. A nasty body attack in the first round had Eric reeling. With true Mexican style, Eric came storming back, chasing the lethal lefty out of the pocket with combinations. Eric set about putting his reach advantage to use, not only snapping Manny's head back with jabs, but stepping out and countering in combination. Going down to the body with right hands to keep the shorter man at bay. An accidental headbutt in the fifth cut Manny. Doctor is gonna have to look at Pacquiao. As slowly but surely, Eric pulled ahead in the street fight. I'm a bigger man. You're fighting at 130. Welcome to my neighborhood. By the last round, Manny Pacquiao was down on all the cards, though certainly not for lack of effort. Eric felt confident enough in his lead and his ability to taunt Manny. He switches to the southpaw stance and fights the entire last round 
as a mock lefty. Morales, he switches southpaw, lands a couple of right hands, puts himself in harm's way though against Pacquiao's left hand. Manny saw his opportunity and tried to pounce. Pacquiao's left hand, yes, that's a big one. I don't know why he would fight Pacquiao. Why in the world would he switch southpaw? That seems dark to me. He switched southpaw and got hit by a massive left hand. It's a picture that doesn't need any captions. Eric was still skilled enough to hold his own and take the win on unanimous scorecards in a classic. Looking back with the hindsight of 2021, we can see the high water mark. This was the end of prime Eric Morales. Eric chose to go up and wait and take a crack at the vacant lightweight title against Zahir Rahim. If Eric looked to be on fire in the first Pacquiao fight, he was flat and stiff as hardwood at 135. Rahim caught him clean often. posted the upset of the year in 2005. Eric drops back down to 130 and accepts the rematch with Manny immediately. The fight goes down in January of 2006 with a second duel in the Vegas desert. Eric looked a bit more himself than he did against the unorthodox Raheem. But Morales always fights back when he's done. But even as he fought with all he had, a few variables had changed since the first go round. Manny was more focused on his head movement. He took the time to make Eric miss, and it provided him clean counter opportunities. It was clear that this was a different Eric Morales. He didn't have the same power or accuracy. The straight right to the body that bothered Manny so much in the first fight simply disappeared the second time around. His snappy jab now only served as an opportunity for Pac to counter. With no real means to keep Manny on the outside, the lanky man was forced to try and out-hustle him. Out-hustling Manny Pacquiao is easier said than done. The rounds wore on, and Eric wore down. Putting the mileage of a lifetime on his body, three minutes at a time, one punch at a time. The ability abandoned Eric Morales. Until finally in the 10th, the warrior would be allowed to take no more. A third meeting was scheduled later that year because a seven-figure payday was worth it. His fans hoped for one last rally from the Mexican great. They would get it eventually, but not tonight. Not against this Manny Pacquiao. And then Morales is feeling him, like I said. Morales tried to counter, but I don't know if he can match Pacquiao's power tonight. I've never seen him stronger. Yeah. The proud warrior for the first time actually looked defeated, sitting on the canvas shaking his head. It took time and Manny Pacquiao to prove it, but Eric Morales was done at the highest level and finally started to admit it to himself. It's a lesson as old as time and on constant repetition in front of our very eyes. Nothing lasts forever. Even the greatest have crumbled under the constant assault of the clock.
appreciate the moment while you have it. Because for better or worse, this too shall always pass. <laughs>